there's been a lot of compliments about the sunflower look, which is new this year. Yes, all. it yeah. is. Yes. That's the theme of to keep with the summerland thing. Well. Yes, yeah, it, it's something to help people remember. Although, if you were there on the night, uh, I remember it vividly. Well, uh, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, mm. what, how old were you then? Um, I'm not sure. I was old enough to drink because I was heading for the pub. Right. And we walked down Albert Street where we lived, and at the bottom, all of the neighbours were gathered looking this way. And I said to my brother, I wonder what's going on. And we got and we saw the flames. Yeah. And it was horrendous. It just gave you a, a, a chill in, throughout your body. I find it quite emotional standing here. I'm sure many of you do as well. And there'll be many people on the island and all across the world whose thoughts are here this evening. And that time 45 years ago, which for many of them is etched into their memories. For those of you who were in that inferno during or after or had loved ones lost in there, it must have been it must have taken unimaginable courage to come here this evening. We've got about 17 or 18 cars out today, which uh, is um, a, a really good gathering. Um, and we're going, are Manx people. Are this they? is all. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, Porsche, Manx, Porsche Club GB Region 30. So ah. uh, we have our own little uh, region on the on the island. So we we, we see other people coming over. Um, there's been uh, a visit this year from um, Porsche Club GB. There's another one due later in September, I think. So the, people are regularly coming in supercars, and it's. it's it's our job, if you like, to welcome and make sure that they uh, uh, they looked after whilst they're here. About 18 months ago, we sort of identified a need for for new glamping sites on the Isle of Man, not just new glamping sites, glamping sites of a, a five-star standard. Um, so we spent a good year looking for for sites um, that, that were acceptable and, and that we think would work. And luckily, we we got in touch with Mike Priest, who owns the Glen Helen Pub, and we secured a lease on the site and. Here we are today. Since then, since 2011, I've been sort of working to develop her as a character and initially wrote my own work. And whilst I was actually in the Isle of Man, I did a show at the Brighton and Camden Fringes in 2015. And this is sort of the next sort of episode of Lotta's story, which has become a little bit more serious and a little bit darker. This weekend, inside the Ticket Hall, there's an exhibition of costumes from the Manx Amateur Drama Federation with the wonderful Michael Starkey. And we've got the abbot down here. The, um, I'm not allowed to call it a tank, folks. It is a tank as far as I'm concerned, but I would get shot for saying that. It's an artillery piece, self-propelled. Uh, there's all sorts of vintage vehicles that come and go between Castletown and Port Erin. And of course, speaking so of... You'd have seen them on the road, the vehicles going between the two stations. But how do you find it? And Frontline, as an MHK, do you suffer from people trolling? I believe I do, um, Paul. Um, however, you are in public life and you've got to expect an element of that. But um, there's certainly been an awful lot recently that has been, as I believe, um, virgin on defamatory or... Um, it, it's perhaps politically motivated, it, it seems. The Manx Bar is a resurrection of what happened m many years ago, and it's been going for some time, the modern bar has been going for some time, but it's a way of promoting the Isle of Man, all that's good about the Isle of Man, but doing it in a slightly different way and doing it largely through poetry. Fine. Do you have to create poetry during yes. your year? Yes. And special poetry? I mean, does it have to be on, on certain themes about the Isle of Man or anything? It can be on anything. Ah, you got one. Paul Moulton directs MTV and wanted to interview me to talk about rhyme and the bardic pastime and why it was my cup of tea. I didn't know that was going to happen, by the way. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, you did give can the I rest keep of... that? Yes, you can. Of course oh, you can. It's mine. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get you to sign that. <laughs> now, the news today is that this is now going to become part of the exhibition of this here at the Manx Museum. So yeah. what was that like to part with your, your favourite bit of kit, I'm guessing? <laughs> Quite odd. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're really passionate about the, about the bike and it's... Uh, it's quite hard to let it go, but it's it's so fantastic that it's going to be here. You know, it was built to to compete here and to be successful here, and it's certainly done that. And to think that it's just going to reside here is perfect. So it couldn't it couldn't be better. So this is Douglas Promenade at the very last day of August 2018, and it's quite a sad sight, really, isn't it, for lots of people to see the Imperial Hotel finally coming down. This is been quite a long procedure. The road itself, the drives, have been shut off for months. Uh, then there's been hold-ups because it's in a conservation area. But uh, 
It's been taking a few weeks, but suddenly in the last day or two, and especially today, the last day of August, suddenly the sign's gone from the front and this is really it.